Good morning. It's a beautiful Saturday morning and it's time to get busy. I have three Facebook Marketplace deals that I'm going to go collect. I'm also going to do a, a couple of private picks. I'll get some footage, hopefully. Let's go. It's solid 19 degrees out. That's just Michigan for you. There's really not much you can do about it. You just power right through it. You get used to it after a while. Uh, it's been a relatively mild winter so far, but anyhow, the first pickup I'm going to go to are two typewriters that I picked up, I already paid for. I also asked if they had anything else and hey look, they're clearing out an estate. So I get to go through and hopefully find some more valuable items to resell. So I'll take you on that journey first. After that, we have a pretty neat reel-to-reel -reel unit. I'll show you that one as well. It's, it's pretty crazy what they go for even when they're not working. And then last night we got a message from a gentleman that I bought a toy collection from a while ago. He reached out and said he had a bunch of old electronics he wants to sell. So we're gonna go visit him again. He's just around the corner for where we live. So let's go on this journey together and I'll show you what I pick up. Friends, how do you feel about snow? Is this uh, something that you enjoy or something you definitely don't enjoy? I know a lot of people that live in Michigan tend to go down to Florida or Arizona uh, for the winter because it's just, I mean, it just, it gets super, I mean, it's a long and cold winter. There's no other way to describe it. There's our beautiful city covered in the snow. Yeah, there's Grand Rapids for you from a different perspective. We don't have too many tall buildings, but the ones that we do have are pretty nice and tall. And a nice thing about Michigan, you know, unlike a lot of the southern states that are not equipped for snow, snow is obviously very common here. So the city, you know, most cities around have the right equipment and the right people to take care of all the roads. So yeah, even though it's a little slick, it's really not that bad to drive in once you get used to it. Okay, just finished up with the first pickup. The gentleman was clearing out an estate sale. There are more items there. However, nothing of value. And the one item I made him an offer for, he said he wanted to just keep it anyways. It was a bunch of vintage plush. He did, however, have a bunch of Department 56 houses, but they're asking 650 for all of them. So I told him that, you know, we're resellers and uh, we hopefully can make a deal for them in the future if they want to just get rid of them. So I would, for a value of 650, I would probably pay around $300 as that way after fees, shipping, taxes, I would basically almost double my money over time. Let me show you those two typewriters that I just picked up. So this one right here is really unique. I couldn't find the exact version. It's an Underwood. It has this long, I'm not sure what this is called, this bar up front, but it's a pretty neat piece. And then this Remington Noiseless is in pretty rough condition, but I'll pop up some comps on the screen so you can see what they go for roughly. I'll probably just sell this as is or four parts. And same with this one, I'll clean it up and sell it as is four parts. The next one is pretty neat. It's a reel to reel unit. And uh, this reel-to-reel -reel unit, the gentleman has it up for 140 but it's worth about $400 just for parts. So let's see if I can get it for a little bit cheaper, and I'll show it to you if we make a deal. So I'm making a deal for the TX. It's kind of hard to see it, but I'll pop up the comps on the screen for this thing. Even for parts, you'll be uh, surprised what they go for. He wanted $140, I gave him 100 for it. On to the next one. All right, next stop is the private pick. This is the gentleman I bought a uh, an entire vintage Fisher Price toy collection. Some months ago, probably six months ago, he reached out to me yesterday. I'm gonna go see what he has for sale this time around. That was a lot of fun. Scott, thank you. If you ever by chance watch this video, I do, really do appreciate your continuous business. So Scott is a gentleman that I've done business with before. He reached out to me last night and uh, said, hey, look, I have a bunch of these vintage electronics and the stuff, if you wanna come take a look again, and buy it for resale. So here's a sneak peek of what I got. I'll show you the rest of it when I get home. So here's, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a Kanika camera in here. This is one of the most valuable items. This is an Alessi's DM5. It's a bit, it's a high sample rate, 18 bit drum module with the original power supply. It's worth about a hundred. And then in here, that's a hundred plus ship, uh, a couple of small gadgets, a couple of old iPhones, a Sony Handycam that has some issues. There's a Sony Blu-ray player in here. Um, 
but it's a smart Blu-ray player and they go for about 30 to 40 plus shipping with the remote some vintage board games and uh, back here are a couple of project slide projector and a tripod not too bad when I get home I'll uh, show you a little bit in detail what I picked up today and, and we'll go from there back home now let me show you what I got from that private pick so I laid everything out here on a table and go through it and pop up some comps so you can see why I decided to pick, to pick this stuff up. I didn't get everything that he had to offer. Always look at sell through rate first and then value. The most valuable piece is this LSS DM5. It's this old school drum module. It's worth about a hundred bucks plus shipping. I paid two hundred dollars for everything here so you'll have to be the judge to see if that was worth it or not. I found a Sony Handycam. If it works, it's worth about a hundred dollars with all the accessories and chargers. However, this one has an issue where this lens piece doesn't open when a camera switch. So something happened in there. So I might have to sell it for parts, or maybe see if one of our technicians can take a look at it. He had a bunch of old phones. These are two iPhones. I don't know off the top of my head which iPhone this is. I think it might be the four or five. I need to find chargers for them. I'm sure they have some value. Just kind of threw them into the deal uh, because I don't know if they work or not, etc. This little flip camera is also part of that deal. It's only worth about 10 bucks or so, but you know it was there, easy to ship. This Konica Autoflex. It's uh, probably like a $40 camera. It does have some accessories with it as well. This Pentex bag is not really worth much. I may just recycle it, throw it out, or I may, may use it to ship it in so that it has a little bit more protection inside of a box. And then this little Argus camera, it's only worth about $15 to $20 plus shipping. Not, there's really no way for me to test these old school cameras, so I'm just going to disclose that what I know about them. This Sony DVD player, or a Blu-ray Blu player, if you look at the model number, every time you see one of these, just look it up because this has, I believe this is the smart version. I'll pop up the comps uh, for them. Of course, it did come with the remote and I'll throw in an HDMI cord as well into the bundle. And I picked up these four board games. They all seem to be complete. Of course, we'll double check them. They're all vintage from the 60s and 70s. This one's dated 1968. It's score four. This Nile game, also very old, has some damage to the box, which of course hurts the resale value a little bit. But if it's complete, again, I'll pop up the comps. I don't remember off the top of my head what it's worth. This one, initially, I didn't even want to look up because it looked so boring, but it's worth about 50 bucks, which is pretty crazy. And it does seem to be relatively complete. And again, you know, we'll have to double check that before we list it. And of course, a little bit of damage. I mean, they're 40, 50 years old. There has to be some damage unless they were kept mint. And the last one is this Risk game. Again, old school version of Risk, but it seemed to be relatively complete. And I've dealt with uh, Scott before in the past and I know he always took care of his stuff. So that was uh, not something that I spent time with, you know, counting blocks and pieces, you know, it's just a waste of time there. If it's incomplete, it still has some value. I also picked up these two. This is an old projector screen with stand. Made in USA vintage. And then this is a uh, tripod. Again, made in USA. And I'll pop up the comps for these as well. Anyways, that's going to do it for this one. Toddy's taking a nap. It's not a bad idea on this uh, very, very cold winter's day. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the ride along and uh, we'll see you in the next one.